The day of the masquerade ball was almost also the last day I saw Neil. I'm mad and I haven't gotten my feelings under control ever since. I'm not quite sure what's to make of the situation either. All I know is that I've been avoiding Neil ever since. I haven't even told Sarah what's going on. I can't make any sense of it. I just can't believe the nerve of him, pretending to be some stranger who didn't know me, taking me for a fool, flirting with me, making me believe I had something real going on. Ugh, I'm just so angry at him. The door of my boutique opens and disturbs my thoughts. Ah, oh, a customer, at least that will distract me. A woman enters the boutique, and with the way she's confidently making her way towards me, makes me feel, makes me think I know her from somewhere. It's the fucking cousin. <laughs> Darling! <laughs> she cries out. I cringe, yes, I know her. It's the woman from the ball. I'm apparently Neil's cousin. I don't really want to deal with her right now. Can I help you? I ask anyway. Mm. It's me, you know, the kind of tipsy girl gal at the masquerade ball. It's okay if you don't remember me, but I recognize your exquisite taste from anywhere. Nice to meet you, I'm Angela Parker. I simply nod my head and briefly take note that her last name is different from Neil's. Millie Zibudi. <laughs> Zibudi. What can I do for you? Well, you see, I had to get my hands on whoever designed your costume, and after grilling my cousin about it, he mentioned you were a designer. Ha! <laughs> Fancy that. She laughs a little. Anyways, I'm in need of your servants. Uh, no services. Servants. Not servants. Services. I don't want you as my servant. Which, like, in other animes, that would be what would be going on, but, like, that's not this anime. I want you to design a dress for an upcoming Christmas party. Dresses at last. Something I'm good at. What kind of dress? A devious smile plays on her lips. A smoking hot dress that will make anyone's panties come flying off, okay? <laughs> Including my own, perhaps. You know, something raunchy. I stare at her a little bit and cock an eye around her. Perhaps you like to go naked instead? <laughs> Angela laughs out loud in a shrill voice. You're funny! I give you that! She leans down to the counter, playing with her hair. But no, I want the dress to come off later. I'm going to the formal event with a guy I'm trying to impress, so I need to amp up the foreplay. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> the way she talks makes me feel a little embarrassed. She doesn't have much of a filter on herself. Something red, or something perhaps black. Maybe something transparent, I joke. Hey, that could work! <laughs> she nods her head. Lately, those celebrities are prancing around in nothing but sheer pieces of cloth. That's an excuse for a dress, anyway. Uh, but you said the event is formal. Mm. Angela shrugs. They're used to it. I can only imagine how they're used to her forwardness. But hey, the customer is king. I think I can make something that suits your tastes. That's fantastic. She quickly rummages through her purse and pulls out a business card. Here's my contact info. Just give me a call when we can set an appointment. I accept her business card. It looks quite, actually quite business-like despite her personality. I'm not quite sure I'm up to this task, but I'll give it all my all. I will, I say with a smile. Great! You'll hear from me soon. Bye-bye now! She turns to leave the shop. Okay, well, I'm gonna make a dress for the cousin. A few days later, and I hand set up an appointment with Angela Parker. I called her after our initial meeting. I told her I had a few designs in mind and wanted to look over some with her. For some reason, she was too busy to visit me, so she proposed I visit her instead. Since it was a slow day at my store, I figured I could pay a house visit after all. So that's where I am, sitting in front of a tall apartment building, waiting for the doorman to let me in. I've got my portfolio and drawing materials with me. The building looks pretty fancy. I wonder if Angela is just as rich as Neil is. Soon enough, I'm welcomed inside, and I go up the elevator to her apartment. It's an apple, or an orange. I ring the doorbell and patiently wait for Angela to answer. <laughs> there you are! You look lovely today, says Angela as she opens the door with her phone against her ear. No, not you, sir. Although I'm sure you look lovely today as well, she answers to the phone. Angela motions for me to come inside, and I rush inside. Angela's apartment looks pretty spacious and modern, with a funky-looking furniture that seems very contemporary. I look around for a place to sit, and again Angela motions to the very white and printish couch. She sits down, her she sits down herself, holding up a finger to let me know she'll be right with me, and continues talking on the phone. Angela finally hangs up. Sorry about that, I'm busy with work, but anyways, show me what you've got. I throw myself into my work, and the one thing that keeps me distracted from everything else, and the one thing that my passion in life. I show Angela my portfolio of sketches that I've made for her dress, showing her dozen designs, which each one she gasps and compliments me, and tells me which parts she likes and which one she doesn't. 
We spent our time discussing what elements we could combine together to create our perfect dress. I'm actually having quite a bit of fun. No one has really shown such an interest in my work before. The one thing I'm grateful for? She hasn't brought up Neil. Not even once. I welcome the distracting. Distra distraction. Angela gets another phone call, interrupting our heated discussion, whether or not to cover up her private parts. <laughs> she quickly answers the call and starts pacing around the room. I go back to sketching the dress we were working on together, wondering how I can make it look not so tacky. Um, hmm, why not come over? Angela asks of the person on the phone. I'm too engrossed with my sketches, so I'm not paying much attention to what Angela is saying. I hold up the portfolio to her after I finish the sketch. Angela gives it a quick look over and then points at the breast and shakes her head before babbling some more on the phone. She's like, mm -mm, more, more skin, more. I translate as not enough cleavage and start conjuring up a nude sketch, turning, tuning out her conversation. After Angela hangs up the phone, we get back to her dress again. I know I'm spending way too much time and effort on getting the sketch just right, but I'm having fun, so I don't really mind if she makes a thousand revisions. Right, I haven't asked yet. What's your rate? Angela asks. There's a blank look on my face. Uh, I always find it rude to tell people how much I charge, especially when each dress was unique and I had a different price. I couldn't really answer her question. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Name your price. I gladly paid for all the effort. You're doing such a wonderful job so far. I suddenly feel coy and smile. Thank you. Her phone starts to ring again and Angela throws her hands up in the air and quickly answers it. But not before excusing herself. She walks out of the living room. I take a little break, wanting to, ha to have Angela op opinion before I work any further. And I simply look around the room. There's a few photographs hung up on the wall and I make my way over to examine them. They're mostly pictures of Angela in different attire from famous looking places such as Pyramids of Egypt, the Eiffel Tower of France, and a bunch of other famous landmarks. She's traveled quite a bit. They aren't really any family pictures though. I wonder why. But then I spot one that has Angela in it when she was a teenager and a young looking Neil. I feel my face flush red as I suddenly remember the night at the masquerade. I avert my eyes from the embarrassment. Angela walks back into the room. I do apologize for being so busy at the moment. People just can't get enough of me. Your pictures are beautiful, I say with a smile. Do you always travel alone? You only, I only see you in the pictures. Angela's smile falters. She gives me a faint half smile instead. Mm. Mostly, yes. Not on good terms with the family and all, but that's a story for another time. Now, where were we? We get back to work and we manage to get a little bit more of the design done. Then the doorbell rings. Angela leaves the room to answer and I'm back to pouring my ideas into my sketches. Couldn't it wait? I hear someone say from the hallway. No, it couldn't. You have to see this. I've been dying to show you, I hear Angela respond. They walk into the room and I look up from my portfolio to greet them, and it's Neil. Hi! I swallow my words. Mm. <laughs> Neil! So he really did dye his hair black, I guess. Neil immediately averts his eyes. He's still sporting the black hair of, of his that's so unfamiliar on him, but his face is all too familiar to me, despite looking paler than normal. What's she doing here? He asks Angela. Excuse me? What are you doing here? As I him over the head, be a nice young man. I'll have you know I've commissioned her to make me a dress. Yes, but why is she? Gestures with his arms. Here. Angela sits now next to me on the couch. I'm too busy to leave, so I invited her over. Greet him politely. I look down at the floor and clench my fist into, fingers into a fist. This is awkward but I try to be polite and greet him. Hello, Neil. Hmm. I can feel Neil's eyes on me and I hear him sigh. Good day, he says stifling. He's blushing, motherfucker. Why are you gonna be saying shit about me and then blush the next second? Ugh, hormonal teenager. Freaking, wait, you're like 24. Hormonal freaking 20 year old. I'm like one year older than you, bro. Neil quickly averts his eyes again and frowns at Angela instead. You didn't ask me to come over for her, right? You know I'm swamped with work this week. I can't afford to take off breaks. Who? Who? You've always worked in lately. I just wanted to show you our vase. Just look how fabulous it turned out to be. Angela points toward a simple white vase standing on top of the coffee table. Angela, what are you doing? You got us together on purpose. I hate you, but I love you, but I hate you, Angela. Ugh. Neil sighs loudly. 
Covering his mouth, his face with his hand to show his disappointment. I sit there quietly, seething in my anger, clenching my fist around my pencil case. I need to go. I can't stand being around him any longer. Angela, I'm leaving, I tell her. I scoop up my materials and close my portfolio. Sweetheart, no, you don't need to go if this baboon is bothering you. <laughs> baboon, Neil interjects. I'll let you know when I've come up with a suitable design. I quickly stand up and I walk away from both of them, refusing to look at Neil any longer. I can hear them yell at each other when I finally leave. <sighs> I need to save. I haven't saved in forever. Yes, I haven't saved since like what? Like chapter three? <laughs> this game is so good. I haven't stopped playing all day. Oh my god, but I need to stop. I need to, I can't I cannot finish this game. I cannot finish this game in one go. It's so long. Anyways, you guys, thank you so much for watching this, and I'll see you guys in my next video, in my next live stream. Until next time, have a good one. Bye. Janet.